Good morning, beloved in Jesus Christ. I welcome you all to today's worship service. Uh, worship service of Reformed Church Jobek on the Sunday of 3 May 2020. Myself as worship leader, Pastor T. Rabari, uh, the rubber man. Beloved, let us begin this worship service by heeding the call to come and worship by reading from Revelation 4, verse 6 to 11. Revelation 4, verse 6 to 11, which shows what is happening in heaven or what will happen in heaven where Jesus is worshipped, is praised. And that is what we must also reflect as the church still here on earth. In Revelation 4, verse 6 to 11, And around the throne, on each side of the throne, are four living creatures, full of eyes in front and behind. The first living creature like a lion, the second living creature like an ox, the third living creature with the face of a man, and the fourth living creature like an eagle in flight. And the four living creatures, each of them with six wings, are full of eyes all around and within. And day and night they never cease to say, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. And whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him, who is seated on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him, who is seated on the throne, and worship him who lives forever and ever. They cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Worthy are you, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they existed and were created. Indeed, let us come to worship before the Lord our God. Let us take this time and in a moment of silence seek God's help and blessing. Our eyes are lifted towards the hills and we ask ourselves where will our help come from? Our help, our salvation, our deliverance comes from Jehovah, the Lord God, creator of heaven, earth and all that exists. Beloved, may the grace of our Lord Jesus and the love of God our Father be with you through the working of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved, let us then praise God the Almighty. We'll sing the song which says, Praise to the Lord Almighty. If you are following, also using the pamphlets, the worship service pamphlets, um, you can sing Nimbo Zabati in the 141, Renda Morena Ramanda Othe, and also in Zulu, Bongani. Uso manja, inkoso uso manja from Amagama Oktabelela, number 23. So let's sing that song, uh, Praise to the Lord Almighty.
Beloved, we come to the Lord because he called us, he revealed himself to us, and what we know about God is summarized in the Apostles' Creed, the 12 Articles of Faith, and in line with May, the month of May being Africa month, uh, every Sunday we will recite the Apostles' Creed in different languages. But if you want to do it in your own language, it's also okay. But it's also good that we learn and remind each other, encourage each other uh, to worship God even although we have English, but we can also use uh, the different languages. So today let us recite the Apostles' Creed, say what we believe using Isisutu, Southern Sutu, Rabua, Uzwapilung, Zedumelang. And all of us say, Idumela, Umudimuntate, Yamata, Ohe, Mushodi, Walihodimo, Lilifat. Leo Jesu Creste, Murawahai, Ya Tuetwing Anusi, Morena Waruna. Ya Emutwing, Kimoya Ohala Lelang. Ya Tuetwing, Kimurezana, Maria. A Utriswa Bushoko, Tazap Ontio Sipilato. A Tahi Swasfapano. A Shwa, a Patwa Libiting. A Tewe la Mashukum Adihele. A Tuaba Fung Katsa Zilaboraro. A Nulo Hela Lihodimo. Mo adusing ting lito hong le lutuna la mudimu ndate ya mata uli. Mo atlang uhuta ting uta asula ba pilang le ba shile. Kidumela moya o halale lang. Kidumela kereke ya bukreste e akareza. E halale lang. Kopano ya ba halaledi. Tsarelo ya dibi. Tsuho ya mili. Libo pilo bo safili. Amen. Beloved, indeed let us come in faith to meet with God and as we meet with God we are also reminded of his covenant requirements that we are in covenant relationship with God. We are called to walk with him in his commands but also to know that we walk with him by his grace, grace that redeems us, forgives us, our sins and transgressions. Let us remind each other of God's law by reading from Deuteronomy chapter 5 verse 6 to 21 and also continuing in chapter 6 verse 4 to 9. Deuteronomy chapter 5 from verse 6 it reads as follows. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is on the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing steadfast love to thousands of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who takes his name in vain. Observe the Sabbath day to keep it holy as the Lord your God commanded you. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter or your male servant or your female servant or your ox or your donkey or any of your livestock or the sojourner who is within your gates, that your male servant and your female servant may rest as well as you. You shall remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt. And the Lord your God brought you out from there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore the Lord your God commanded you to keep the Sabbath day. Honor your father and your mother as the Lord your God commanded you, that your days may be long and that it may go well with you in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder 
and you shall not commit adultery, and you shall not steal, and you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor, and you shall not covet your neighbor's wife, and you shall not desire your neighbor's house, his field, or his male servant, or his female servant, his ox, or his donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Deuteronomy 6, from verse 4 to verse 9, it continues to encourage us to uh, accept the law of God, to accept that we are God's people, that Jehovah is our God, and to walk with him, and his commandments to influence us in everything we do. Uh, every day of our life, every area that we are in. Deuteronomy 6, from verse 4 to 9, it says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise up. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between, our, between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gate. Let the church say, Amen. Beloved, let us accept that as the law that must influence us let us accept it as the law the word that comes from god who loves us and wants the best for us for you that you will be saved you'll be redeemed from sin and indeed let us uh, walk in his wisdom let us uh, reflect on the law the reading of the law and the assurance of pardon by singing the sutu song from civilizationi number three two three Eba nyurilueng, klong little medicine. Eh, come to the water, cover the madini, whatever renam dara kana varna dora. Eh, unamadi. And chorus yating, the chorus is mutu mangli mang, mutu munga na munga, arena dora kade. Niko bidzo no, tili bidzo abuze baiza dibi, whatever ita zubi dani, mutu mangli mang, ate. Eh, Karim Borolu imboles sing that song, sikulele lokulo. Uh, when we continue to reflect on the law of God, the reading of God's commandment, but also knowing that He is our uh, Savior. Eba nyurilweng, klong litle meti. Oh, 
Beloved, yes, as the Sutu is saying, mutumang limang. Everyone, uh, you might have done whatever wrong thing. Uh, God is still saying, come. You are not far away. Uh, God is saying, come. No matter what status you are in, God is saying, come. Uh, verse 2 says, are you thirsting for forgiveness? You are tired of sin. You're called also to come and get joy. Verse 3. Now we pony uli ditsila. Yes, you might be dirty. Uli into Something which is uh, disgusting and worthy. Yali fell. Ubi to awe na. Utwi. Klo. Utwache. Please listen. It says come. And then verse 4. Itla hanel. Make hurry. Uh, and come and get joy instead of uh, mourning and crying. Uh, you are given life, uh, peace. And as in it's not something which you say it's too expensive. I can't get it. It's only for the rich. It's only for special people. No. God is saying, Motumang Limang. Go. Beloved, let us continue to reflect on the reading of God's law and sing from Nimbo Zabatendi the song which says the song which is made from Psalm 1 that's what Psalm 1 tells us and that's what God is saying come and walk with me in the path of righteousness let's sing that song
Beloved, indeed, let us walk in the path of righteousness. As we continue to worship, let us come to prayer. I will lead you in, in prayer. Let us pray. Beloved, we are called to come and pray Jehovah. Oh Jehovah, we come to you. We know that you are the only God, the true and living God. You were there yesterday and today you are the same. And tomorrow you never change. You are almighty. Your power does not decrease or diminish. Your love and mercy is new every day. You are wise. You know everything. You understand everything. You control everything. Directing everything that happens toward your purposes, toward your goals. You direct everything also for the benefit of your loved, your beloved church. Oh God, you are holy, you are righteous, you are perfect. Indeed, the standard of righteousness is with you. We thank you that you reveal to us that you, Jehovah, are God. You make us to believe in you. And here we are to worship, to sing, to pray, to read and listen to your word. On this day that you blessed, that you set apart, the Sabbath, the day of rest, that reminds that you are the creator, the giver of life. You conquered death and nothing is impossible for you. On this day we look forward to the eternal Sabbath, the eternal rest, that Jesus Christ achieved for us when he rose from the dead. Indeed, we look forward. O oh God, plant in our hearts and make the desire in our hearts to grow, the desire for eternal life, the desire to see you, to be with you. Let it encourage us. Let it give us hope. Let it comfort us on our journey here on earth. We thank you, O oh God, that you give us your word. Even though we are in a situation, circumstance whereby we can't meet physically as we normally do because of regulations in order to respond to the coronavirus. But we know that you are with us everywhere we are. As you promised that wherever two or three are gathered, you are with us. We thank you and we believe that indeed you are with us. That's why we call to you, we pray and we worship knowing that in Jesus' name you accept us. We pray, O oh God, that be with us even as we read your word. Help us to understand, help us to see you, to know you, to grow in loving and believing in you. We also pray, O oh God, that you be with us here in South Africa, be with us in these times where many we are thinking and talking about coronavirus were affected by this COVID-19 and also the attempts and efforts of governments to curb the spread of this disease. Oh God, we pray to you knowing that you are in control of everything. Even diseases and germs are under your control. They are part of your creation. We pray, oh God, knowing that you know us, you know our bodies. You know that we are weak, we get sick, we get tired, we get old. We get unwell, not only in our bodies, but also emotionally and psychologically and mentally. But in all our weakness and illnesses, we look to you and ask for your help and strength. We ask for healing, O oh God. We know that the perfect and eternal healing awaits us in eternal life. As Jesus has shown, when he rose from the dead with a body that does not get sick, that does not die, Oh God, we look forward also to that. But here we are still on the journey. Encourage us, oh God, but also help us. Heal us so that we see your power, we are reminded of your power. Help the doctors and nurses that are caring for our sick. Help them be, to be merciful, to be kind, but also to be bold, to be confident, and to continue as sacrifices, offering themselves to help others. We pray for our leaders, our governments, so that, oh God, they take the right decisions, not only in response to this situation of COVID-19, but also in regards to the economy and many other decisions that must move us forward as a society. We pray to you, oh God, that you help us. We need protection. 
We cry about violence and crime. Oh God, even in our homes, there are many who are not safe. We pray that you protect them. Help our police and justice system to be bold in fighting against what is wrong and promoting what is righteous. We ask you, O oh God, that you be in our hearts, in our minds, so that we are able to love others, to love each other. Yes, we are different as South Africans. We are different as Africans, even on this month of May, the month of Africa. O oh God, help us to love each other, to accept each other, to work together. We look back even from the history of Africa when the Organization for African Unity was formed. Help, O oh God, that the nations, the governments in this continent of Africa, they do the right thing. We need to fight against poverty and oppression and also to grow the economy, but also to work together against terrorists and conflicts. Oh God, we pray that the governments work together, not only here in Africa, but all over the earth. Help that governments work together, even to protect the environment, even to work together in fighting terrorism and many wrong things but we know oh god that you are the king the eternal kingdom belongs to you your kingdom knows no boundaries and that's why we also pray for your church our brothers and sisters all over the world who believe and confess jesus as the savior and lord oh god be with them protect your church we know that there are others who are not free they are oppressed by certain governments even in this time of coronavirus where others are trying to use technology, you find certain governments even interfering and stopping the church, stopping the spread of the word of God. But we know that nothing can stop you, O Jehovah. We know that you are almighty. Help your church, help us to be faithful, to persevere, to be determined no matter the situation. Help us even in the face of death or even difficult situations not to lose faith. We ask from you, O oh God, that even no matter what happens, we go up, we go down, it's hot or cold. Yes, economy might shake. Help us to be faithful and hold on to you. O oh God, we know that you are the one who called us and you are the one who hold us even to the end. Help us in our families. Help us in the work that we have to do. Some were in need of jobs. Some were uncertain about the future of our jobs and businesses. Help us, O oh God, even in those situations, to can have solutions, to can fall and get up, to can be shaken, but not fall down. We ask that you help us. We know that you are our helper. Help us, O oh God, even in our schoolwork. Many who are studying are affected by this situation. O oh God, help them to be determined in their studies so that even when the times come that they continue and they come to write exams, they are ready especially even the metrics, the grade 12s. It's a difficult time, but, oh God, we know that you can help them. We pray to you, oh God, knowing that you are living, you hear us, and you can do for us. We know that we don't deserve anything good because of our sin, but we know that you are gracious and merciful. Do for us in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Beloved, let us continue in this worship service and we come to the reading of today's scripture. Uh, we are going to read in the Old Testament the book of 2 Kings. Amakosi Wesibili. Mahosi Kanazikosi Zabubili. Chapter 1. And we are reading that whole chapter, which is verse 1 to 18. Zikosi Zabubili. Amakosi Wesibili, chapter 1. Uh, that's what we'll be looking at. Even if we are to continue together in this month of May, uh, I'll be focusing on this first section of Second Kings and I will explain as we come to the explanation. Zikosi Zawiri, Second Kings, Amakosi Wesibili, you will read following in the Bible translations that you have. In the English Standard Version, which I'm using, it reads as follows. After the death of Ahab, Moab rebelled against Israel. Now Ahaziah fell through the lattice, lattice in his upper chamber in Samaria and lay sick. So he sent messengers telling them, Go, inquire of Baal Zebub, the god of Ekron, whether I shall recover from this sickness. 
But the angel of the Lord said to Elijah the Tishbite, Arise, go up to meet the messengers of the king of Samaria, and say to them, Is it because there is no God in Israel that you are going to inquire of Baalzebub, the god of Ekron? Now therefore, thus says the Lord, You shall not come down from the bed to which you have gone up, but you shall surely die. So Elijah went. The messengers returned to the king, and he said to them, Why have you returned? And they said to him, There came a man to meet us, and said to us, Go back to the king who sent you, and say to him, Thus says the Lord, Is it because there is no God in Israel that you are going to inquire of Baal-zebub, the god of Ekron? Therefore you shall not come down from the bed to which you have gone up, but you shall surely die. He said to them, What kind of man was he who came to meet you and told you these things? They answered him, He wore a garment of hair with a belt of leather around his waist. And he said, It is Elijah, the Tishbite. Then the king sent to him a captain of fifty men with his fifty. He went up to Elijah, who was sitting on the top of a hill, and said to him, O man of God, the king says, Come down. But Elijah answered the captain of the fifty, If I am a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and consume you and your fifty. Then fire came down from heaven and consumed him and the fifty. Again the king sent to Elijah another captain of fifty men with his fifty. And he answered and said to Elijah, O man of God, this is the king's order. Come down quickly. But Elijah answered him, If I am a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and consume you and your fifty. Then the fire of God came down from heaven and consumed him and his fifty. Again, the king sent the captain of a third fifty with his fifty. And the third captain of fifty went up and came and fell on his knees before Elijah and entreated him, O oh, man of God, please let my life and the life of this fifty servant of yours be precious in your sight. Behold, fire came down from heaven and consumed the two former captains of fifty men with their fifties. Now let my life be precious in your sight. Then the angel of the Lord said to Elijah, Go down with him. Do not be afraid of him. So he arose and went down with him to the king and said to the king, Thus says the Lord, Because you have sent messengers to inquire of Baal-zebub, the king, the god of Ekron, is it because there is no god in Israel to inquire of his word? Therefore you shall not come down from the bed to which you have gone up, but you shall surely die. So he died, according to the word of the Lord that Elijah had spoken. Jehoram became king in his place in the second year of Jehoram, the son of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, because Ahaziah had no son. Now the rest of the acts of Ahaziah that he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles? of the kings of Israel. Let the church say Amen. Indeed, beloved, that is uh, the word of God that we are looking at today. And in looking with you at this passage, I want us to focus on verse 3 to 4. Verse 3 to 4, you find the following words. Is it because there is no God in Israel that you are going to inquire of Baal-zebub the God of Ekron. Now therefore, thus says the Lord, you shall not come down from the bed to which you have gone up, but you shall surely die. By reading with you this passage, I want us to be reminded or to learn of the existence and authority of the Lord and also the presence of his word. The fact that Jehovah is God, he is there, and he has power. And that which God is, is also connected with his word. 
the word of God represents who God is. Ngokufunda nani lana ngifuna ukuthi sibone ukuba khona kukaNkulunkulu nokuba namandla kaNkulunkulu nokuthi lezo izinto ziqhumene nelizwi lakhe ukuthi kulizwi lakhe uNkulunkulu ukhombisa amandla akhe nokuba khona kwakhe Bashu ubara nabo HHP and kwethu lo ribone ngawo bahone amudzimi nawo bana manda amudzimi and the hezo zawo bana manda amudzimi nawo bahone a Yehova zwi kha ipfilawe kana zwo tumana na zwine aita nga ipfilawe ngokufunda nani lana beloved it's so that even on this sunday uh, where as i said last time in the churches of classes crowding the church of reform church jobek this sunday but also uh, until the end of the month let us pray let us also make contribution to support the training of the pastors or preachers in our churches the churches of reform churches south africa synod zurbansberg and they are trained through heidelberg theological seminary now we cannot take seriously the preaching of the word the training of preachers if we don't understand the importance of the word of god and how the word of god works or how god works using the word or the, the 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 preaching in this passage that we read as i said you find verse 3 to 4 that question but also it's repeated in verse 9 and also verse 16 is it because there is no god in israel that you are going to inquire of balzebub the god of ekron is it because there is no god where you can go and inquire and get his word and get knowledge of god and what god wants for you what you must do according to the word of god can't you get that in israel can't you get that from jehovah that question was not facing only ahaziah but it was a question that is also facing us if god is there he is powerful then we must know that through his word it is important as we are reading this chapter the first chapter of second kings to remind each other of the context or the background second kings is continuing from first kings uh, in the hebrew bible these two books are, are one book and uh, they make up one book called kings or melakim uh, malakim that is the kingdoms or the kings now this book tells a story or history of about 400 years from the time of david uh, solomon and after solomon there was division separation between israel the northern part and judah the southern part of of israel and judah was ruled by the descendants of david but israel the northern part was ruled by different kings and Ahaziah was part of that northern kingdom or the northern part of israel but this history from first kings to second kings continues until uh, israel goes to exile the northern part goes to exile of assyria and then judah also went to exile of babylon now with any history there is a purpose what you want to achieve will influence how you tell the story what details what facts do you include in the story or what do you leave out because history is everything you, you can't tell everything you have to choose and what you choose depends on what do you want to achieve now the holy spirit in inspiring the authors and the the people who arranged this book he led them to tell this history because he wants them to answer the question why did israel end up in exile the people the, because this book of uh, kings was written when the people were in exile of babylon and then they have to look back they have to look at themselves their history how did we come here because we were high but now we are low we were strong but now we are defeated we had the land and we were controlling other nations 
even controlling the Philistines, the Moabites, in the times of David, they were powerful. They were, they were like the superpower of that time. What happened in about 400 years that they fall? Even from the time of Asia, which is like 150 years until the, the, the exile. What happened? How did you fall? Is it because God was not there? Is it because God failed to help you, to save you? And the answer you will find is that no. Look at what you did. You didn't accept God. You ignored his word. And even when you talk of history, history with purpose, when you compare the book of Kings and the book of Chronicles, Chronicles is also history. But you will find that in that book of Chronicles, it is talking of the times, or it was written in the time after they re returned from Babylon. And now it focuses on God's faithfulness. God was with them. God chose them. And he came also to choose David and the descendants of David. And that's why Chronicles, for example, it doesn't tell the whole history like the, the, the book of Kings. But it focuses on Judah. It focuses on the descendants of David. But another thing which you will see when I'm talking of purpose of history, why history is told like this, why the Holy Spirit is giving us this word like this, is that in the book of Kings, even when you compare with the book of Chronicles, you will find that in the book of Kings, you find the mention of the work of prophets. Many chapters or sections focusing on the work of Elijah. And even here in 2 Kings, chapter 1 to chapter 7, you will see the end of the work of Elijah. But then also after Elijah, there is Elisha. And you find the history, even though the book is called Kings, but it's talking of the work also of prophets. Because God is there. God was there. When the people fall down, they went to exile. God was talking. God was using the prophets. He was working through his word, revealing to the people his word. And that's why when you have to understand this whole book of Kings, you must go to chapter, for example, chapter 17. Go and read chapter 17. It will explain why Israel went to exile. What's the reason? It's not because the Babylonians, the Assyrians, they were stronger than them. No. It was because the people of God had forsaken God. And God who controls history gave them up to be exiled in Assyria. Now, let me just read with you maybe uh, 2 Kings chapter 17. But go and read from verse 11 to 20. I'm reading verse 13 and 14. Listen to these words. Yet the Lord warned, warned Israel and Judah. You see, he warned them by every prophet and every seer, saying, Turn from your evil ways and keep my commandments and statutes in accordance with all the law that I commanded your fathers and that I sent to you by my servants, the prophets. But they will not listen, but were stubborn, as their fathers had been, who did not believe in the Lord their God. They despised his statutes and his covenant that he made with their fathers. And the warnings that he gave them, they went after false idols and they became false. Hey, they went after false idols and they became false. And they followed the nations that were around them, concerning whom the Lord had commanded them, that you should not be like them, you must be holy, you must be different. So the book of Kings is telling history. And it shows that the Lord warned the people by the prophets. But what happened? They did not listen. It is not just a history for Judah and Israel. Maybe they were in exile. But it is also a history lesson for the church, for us believers today. We should not only look around us and cry maybe about South Africa or community falling down, but also even the church. What is the state and condition of the church? But also we must look not only falling into exile, going to exile, losing maybe power, losing economic power, losing uh, materially, losing uh, even health. No, that's not the main things. But the exile of Babylon and Assyria, it is also reminding us of our end. The end is not here on earth. The end 
is in eternal life whether eternal life with god or eternal life in hell and if you get to hell you must not blame god you will look at the history of your life and you will see that god was talking god warned you but you did not listen but my brother my sister my fellow south africans this passage today is saying let's take seriously that god is there he is, has authority he has got power and he's using his word he's giving you the holy spirit and the holy spirit talks through his word so that we learn from this history not to be not to repeat the same mistakes the first thing which we must see here is that the lord uses situations situations or circumstances in life uh, to reveal himself to you to call you to himself but the way you respond to those situations it reveals your attitude toward god his presence and authority in the okay let's finish it on a land is that uncle uncle who sebenza ngezimu who sebenza ama situation mpilwe ni yako or ukukumklaba lapa ukuti asveze kuwe aisambulule kuwe asibonakalise kuwe and usebenza lawo ama situation or izimu ukuti akubize uze kuwe but indlela wena uphendula ngayo indlela wena uhamba ngayo kulawo ama situation kukhombisa ukuthi wena unjani kuNkulunkulu wamukela kanjani ukuba khona kuKnkulunkulu wamukela kanjani amandla akhe chithi chothoma chinda gore chibone ndiri mudzimu shumisa zwimo kushumisa nyimele zine dzaitea kha kutshilo abo mara nakha rushaka kana kashango achi kuitira kudisumbedza uri uhone achi kuitira kudisumbedza kha vhone uri ba mudive uko babidza uri kha badekhai mara ndire ine vhone vha tshimbira ngayo ndire ine vhapindura ngayo zwo zwimo na dzinyimele e eh, isumbedza zwine zwa vhone mbiluni yavo uri na mudzimu ba mbona hani uba hone ha mudzimu na manda mudzimu bone ba zwi jia hani now you see here that even the word of god when you talk of the history the revelation of god the revelation history uh, how did it come to us god used the situation of the peoples the history of israel the history of judah israel and even azia because god controls history god controls all that happens and he works through history and he used the history of this time to reveal himself and that's why we have the bible the bible that uses also history history to teach us about god to can hear the word of god and we see here that the lord used the situation in the life of king azia even to reveal himself to 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 that king calling him to repent because azia was a king of israel the northern part in verse 1 it shows us that he had challenged the people who were supposed to pay tax the people of moab they no longer want to pay tax but also in verse 2 he had a very serious personal issue whereby uh, because he live upstairs uh, he fall down uh, maybe like fall down the stairs or like latter is uh, like there was a window maybe he fall down or there was a opening on the floor then he fall through down and he was seriously injured and he could see that hey he might die uh, because there's nothing that he, he can do but then because of that situation he does what he sends messengers to ekron ekron was a city in the country or land of philistines there was a temple there were priests or prophets of that god called bal zebub and as i said situations they are used by god to show himself to you to teach you to to remind you of god to to bring you close to god but instead of seeking god uh, what does azia do he wants to go and get help from bal zebub and that is why the lord sent elijah the prophet to intercept to stop the messengers on the way to ekron why are you going to ekron is it because in israel there is no god is it because jehovah is not there is it because jehovah you can't hear from him he can't help you is it because of that why are you going to bal zebub in zekro now if you know language english that is called a rhetorical question a rhetorical question is a question that does not expect an answer because the answer is already in the question the answer is obvious it's like for example if maybe you are a child and you did something wrong and the parent and the teacher they say do you think i'm stupid do you think i'm stupid do you think i can't see you that question is not because they can't see you it's not because they're, they're not stupid the answer is no you're not stupid 
But if you say, hey, Tisha, you're stupid, then you are giving a, a wrong answer. Or if maybe your, your, your wife, he, 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 she asks you, Habi, do, do you think I'm getting fat? Do you think I'm getting old and ugly? Hey, the, the answer is not yes. Uh, otherwise, you'll get in trouble. Maybe just say, I don't know, or just keep quiet. So, but sometimes you find that the answer is in the question. He's saying no. And you must speak the truth. Hear the question that the Lord sends Elijah to ask or to tell Azia. It has an answer in the question. The answer is that there is a God in Israel and his name is Yahweh. The true and living God above all other gods who knows everything and has all the power and can save. There is a God in Israel who can talk, who can reveal, who can give you wisdom. Why do you need to go to Ekron to go and ask from Balzebub? And you find that the, 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 the author of this book, even when they use the name Balzebub, Balzebub uh, is like saying the Lord of Flies. Uh, it's, 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 it's a way of showing that uh, that God is nothing. Because the real name of, of the God is, is Baal Zebul, which means a high God, a God who flies. So you find even the author of this passage, he's using that term, that name, and say, that God is nothing. You're going to Baal Zebub. You're going to him. So it was showing that God is there. There is Jehovah. He is almighty. And that's why this question is like this. People believed that, oh, maybe Balzebub can give healing, can give uh, wisdom, can give them knowledge about the future. And that is what maybe Azia wanted. He wanted to know about his future. Maybe he can turn it around. He can change his situation, getting help from Balzebub at Ekron. And there in Ekron, obviously, maybe there's a temple where you can go, go in and meet the prophets, the pastors or the priests of that God. But why go there? Because there is God in Israel who could even do more. Actually, that God was nothing. That Balzebub is nothing. There is Jehovah, the true living God in Israel, who even gave a place, a temple, where you can meet and connect with God. You are reminded that God is near you. You can meet him even though you are a sinner. God can accept you. God has made a way where there were sacrifices, there were priests, and you can reconcile and be blessed by God. You can hear the word of God. If you read Deuteronomy chapter 4, when the Israelites were still on the way before they crossed Jordan. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 7 to 8. You find uh, the, these words. What great nation is there that has a God so near to it as the Lord our God is to us? Do you hear those words? God is near. He's near to these people. Whenever we call upon him, and what great nation is there that has statutes and rules so righteous as all this law that I set before you today? God is near us. And one of the evidence that God is near you is the word, the word of God, the law of God, the revelation of God in the Bible. That is what makes us to know that God is here. We can be close to God. We can know God. We can hear God. And again, you find uh, in First Kings chapter 8, after Solomon had finished building the temple in Jerusalem, and then he dedicated it or he opened it, now you can use it. And he make a prayer in chapter 8. What, what does he pray? He says, yes, God is in heaven, but God can hear us here on earth. Whenever we have sickness, whenever we are defeated, we have lost in battle, whenever we have sinned, whenever we have drought, we go to him all situations this temple is reminding us that god is near us he's here in israel he's here on earth you can meet with god and you can hear what god says and that is what was preached in the bible there were priests who did sacrifices and prayers but also teach the testimonies of god the testimonies i'm talking about the revelation of god to show that god is there and he has an answer for every situation, even for your life. So indeed, the answer to this question is simple. There is a God in Israel 
But Aziel did not want to go to Jehovah. But rather, he chose to go to Ekron because of what was in his heart. He doesn't believe Jehovah. He doesn't accept God. It is like sometimes you find the people, people when they choose, hey, I want to go to a certain university. And you find that maybe you are living in Jobek. There is engineering in Jobek. But no, I want to go far away. Why? Why do you want to go far away? Whereas there is the same course, same quality. But if you ask them, you find that, no, I, I want to run away from my parents. I want a different experience. It's not because there is no God here near you. It's not because the Bible, God is talking to you. It's not because of that. It's because we don't want to go to God. We rather run away. We rather choose different things. And that's what you see with Asia. And the same question is coming to me and you today. Is there a God in South Africa? Is there no Jehovah in South Africa? He's there. He is with us. If you look at the promise, for example, of Matthew 28, verse 18, Jesus telling them, I am with you all over towards the end of the, or to the ends of the world. I am with you because I've got all power in heaven and earth. And I am with you. Even if you go to every part of the world, I am with you. That promise, that declaration, it is still standing. Jesus is with us. Even though he rose and went to heaven, he is with us everywhere. He is no longer limited in his human body, but he is everywhere present through the Holy Spirit. And not only he is with us, he is in us. When you believe he is in you, you can have fellowship or close relationship with God because of the Holy Spirit. But not only because of the Holy Spirit, but also the Bible. Because the Holy Spirit works using the Bible. The Bible. If you want to hear God, if you want the Holy Spirit to talk to you, read the word of God. That's how God works. That's how we know who God is, what he wants, what he does, and how we can live with him, how we can respond to different situations. He is with us even in South Africa. We don't need to go far, maybe go to Nigeria or go to America thinking we'll find God there. The answer is near us. There is Jehovah here in South Africa. And he can speak clearly, even using English or Zulu or Chivenda or Shitsonga or Sutu. And you can hear him. You don't need to go far. And that's why when we talk of God being in Israel, it's also the people of God, the prophets. Even today, we talk of the church, congregations. That's why when we talk of planting churches, starting churches everywhere, it's so that God can be represented in every part of South Africa. People must not go far to hear the word of God. People must have the word of God near them, represented by the church, represented by the preaching, the church preaching, pastors preaching. And that's why we must support not only having churches, but also missionaries and having pastors, people who understand the word of God, who learn the word of God, so that they make God clear to us in every situation. But let me come to the second thing. What is uh, the second thing? The Lord Jehovah works giving you the word, calling you to turn from the wrong path. And your response shows your attitude to his presence and power. Chitusha ubilichina rafanuluchi bona hapa. Ndi mzima ni ya kushuma. Uri na msurofa randile wa kakea. U disa kungulao. U ruma batu. U ruma mraeza. Wa uri humani ka. Heyo ndile wa kakea. Wa shumo nibiza. Uri rembuluani. Marandile ine nane po rapindura. Ito sumbeza uri nango uri ne. Mzima uri nandava nae. Uri nandava uri uhone. Uri nandava na manda ahu. Into esi bile esifane si bonela na esi. Datu nkulu usebenza. Ukuti abubize kule onjela ma mopume njilini. Ukuti uyeke njela e wrong. Ubuye njilini e right. And u tuma abandu, u tuma ilizwi lake. Ukuti wena buya, gukuga, shincha, uyeke le njela e kosa kele. And but njela tinaspendu langayo. Le ilizwi lika nkulu nkulu. Ikombisa indu e kone njilizwi nitu. Ukuti asina ndaba nkulu nkulu. Asina ndaba nkutu kona. Asina ndaba nkuti amanja ake. Eh, or una manja na. So that's what we must see in relationships, relationships between people, whether it's love relationship, friend relationship. You, you find, uh, I, I find that there is something called ghosting. Ghosting. Chipuku. Ispuku. Ghost. It is when you send a, a text or a, a text message, ne? or you call, but the person is like they vanished. They don't answer. 
uh, like a ghost you see they, they, they are not there so you, you don't find them but you wonder why what's happening where are they but some people say worse more worse than ghosting is something called caving I, I, I researched it and I find it's called caving cave uh, what is happening there is when the person is there you talk to them but they don't talk back they don't respond it's like a one-sided communication it's like a one-sided conversation you end up just talking alone some people say that's worse than ghosting but then even more than caving and ghosting there is something called gas lighting gas lighting it's also a term a psychological term explaining relationships and in this gas lighting uh, it comes from a, a movie where a husband manipulated and abused his wife emotionally and psychologically denying reality making her to doubt her reality and she end up going crazy um for, for example uh, if an example of gaslighting maybe the the wife will say uh, I, I saw you with another woman but the guy the husband will say no no you are just imagining things you didn't see me it's not me that's not real you find those kind of things where when you say something no you're just too sensitive you are paranoid you are just being silly you are just being mentally unstable those kind of answers and i'm saying this about ghosting caving and gaslighting because that's what we also do we try to do to god because in the relationship with god and his people you find that people are trying to ghost god ne? god is talking they don't respond or god is like talking alone there is they are there but we don't respond or they are gaslighting whereby even though god is talking they say ah god what you are saying is nothing you can't do it uh, we don't we don't we don't believe your power we don't believe that you can do anything they deny the existence the presence and the power of god you deny the reality and you say ah, no there's no god or whatever he's saying ah, it's not real that's gaslighting as he knew that there was god in israel how do we see this because he knew about elijah he knew about elijah because from verse 6 he, he sent the messengers ne? on their way to ekron they met elijah but elijah didn't tell them his name he told them the message that why are you going to ekron is it because there's no god in israel go back and tell that king of yours asia that he's going to die god is saying he's going to die then the messengers they were i think they were very shocked how can this man out of nowhere he know that we are on a journey he know that we are on a mission to go in to ekron he come and tell us about the king so they turn back they go back to the king and then asia is surprised hey guys why did you come back so quickly hey man ekron is far why did you come so quickly then they tell him we met a certain man he tell us that you're going to die he tell us that why are we going to ekron to balzebub is there no jehovah in israel so they even forgot to ask his name so that's why azia asked them what was he wearing what was he dressed like then they tell him no he was wearing something with hair and on the waist he had a leather belt and then Azia said, yeah, oh, 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 I know that man. It's Elijah. Where does he know him from? Because Elijah was there even before Azia. Azia was the son of Ahab. Ahab is one of the most wicked kings. It's not me judging. It's the Bible. It says Ahab was the worst king in Israel. He did a lot of things. But not only Ahab, eh? who was the mother of Azia? Jezebel Jezebel hey mfazo wengu uziloi mfuma kazwa komboy dangerous woman that woman she influenced Ahab and also influenced the people of Israel going read from first kings chapter 16 first kings chapter 16 she, she she influenced them to 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 pray to this god called Baal because she was married she was not an Israelite she was married from other nation and they, she came with her own religion of Baal and then she influence Israel to worship Baal and she fight against Elijah she want to kill Elijah she killed other prophets but she failed to kill Elijah she even killed some godly people like Nabot because Ahab wanted the farm of Nabot and Nabot said no I don't want to sell you the farm 
So what did Jezebel do? She come with a plan. Kill Naboth. And then we take the farm. That's Jezebel. The mother of Ahazi. But they failed to kill the, uh, Elijah. But look now the son, Ahaziah. He knows there is God. He knows there is a prophet of God. He knows he can inquire of God and get the truth of God. That's why when the messengers come back, he knows it is Elijah. And that is why he now sends soldiers. Why? It's not because he is, he's one to ask. But you can see even in the number of soldiers. How, how can you send 50 people? 50 soldiers. You want to arrest Elijah. You want to catch Elijah. You want to kill Elijah. Verse 9 and 10, they go. They find him on a hill. And listen even to the way they talk to Elijah. The king says, come down, come down. Elijah says, okay, if I'm a man of God, I'm a representing God, then I'm calling the power of God. It must come on you, fire on you. And they were consumed, they were destroyed by fire. But the king again, Verse 11 to 12. He sent a second group, a captain, with 50 people, 50 soldiers. And this one was even more arrogant, more, uh, what do you call, more, more arrogant, yes. No respect. He says, Ewena, come down quickly. He even, even say, come down quickly. The king is calling you. But Elijah said, okay, if I'm the man of God, I represent God, let me call God. He call fire on you. And the fire destroyed them. And that is what was being shown here. It reminds us, even when we read of, uh, uh, of, of what happened uh, in Mount Carmel, 1 Kings chapter 18, Elijah against the prophets of Baal. If you are saying Baal is the true God, let him call fire. Where is Baal? He didn't call fire. And Je Jehovah represented by Elijah. He says, my God is living. He called fire. It bent the sacrifice. And the 500 prophets of Baal, uh, they ended up being killed. It is also being shown here, fire again, where God is showing that he is in control. He controls not just rain, but he controls even the life of people. Uh, the king, he might be having power, but there is someone above him. There is ultimate power, which is God. You, you might have power. You might be king, not just of people, but you think you are king of your own life. You are a queen. You control your own life. Maybe you have money. But remember this. There is someone above you. Whether you like it or not, whether you agree or not, whether you choose to ignore it, but it doesn't deny the reality that there is God and he is above you. And that's what is shown here, that he is above everything. And that's why verse 13 and 14, the third group of soldiers, when they go, they've learned the lesson. They are humble. They realize that Elijah represents the Almighty God. He can give life. He can take life. They come having learned the lesson that Jehovah can destroy immediately. He has that power to take you out of the earth. And they realize that from the past experience of the soldiers who were killed. So they come humble submitting and it is a lesson that that's the attitude we must have the lord is a consuming fire that's what hebrews 12 talks about we must know that god and about god and we respect him and we must come with humble hearts even though others around us whether in the community in your family in your church even in church some people don't respect god but you can be different like this captain in verse 13 and 14, who is humble. He's not like the other captains who chooses to accept and acknowledge that hey, mina, gipansi, di my life can be taken and therefore I must go to the one who gives life and respect him and listen to him. And that's what he shows to us. The passage was a lesson to Israel when they were in exile. That they must submit to the rule of God. The king is Jehovah. And they must fear him. They must trust him. They must obey him. That's what they were being told. That's what the, this history lesson was teaching them. And even if God is warning them, the prophets warn them, stop doing wrong things. There is consequences. There is death. They must listen. 
They must not look down on the word of God. And that is the lesson even to us. Because others will, will say, uh, you are talking of God who punish, eh? Where, where, where is that God? Look, I'm doing sin. I'm doing wrong things. You are telling me I will die. Uh, look, I'm not dying. I'm healthy. I've got money. I've got food. I've got a house. I've got a car. I'm successful. Where is your God who, who punishes? You are telling me I must stop doing wrong. But where is that God? Where is he? Why is he not punishing? And that also makes maybe the preachers or the prophets to lose confidence. And they say, ah, maybe we are not men of God. Maybe the word of God is no longer with us. Hey, ah, we, we are not sure. We are not sure. Hey, hey. We are, must be sure. This history lesson from King, Second Kings is telling us that the word of God, God works. God is there. It's the, it's the same with what you find in Second Peter chapter 3. Go and read Second Peter chapter 3 verse 1 to 10. Where there are people who, who, who laugh at, at, the, at the truth that there is judgment day. They say, ha, 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 you are telling us that there is judgment day. Jesus will come back soon. How many years has Jesus gone? How many people have died since Jesus went? You are telling us, hey, hey Jesus is coming back soon. Coming back soon. Where is he? Where is the judgment day? But then Second Peter chapter 3, it says, uh, it's because you are stupid. You, you don't know. God... For him, 1,000 years is like one day. Maybe now we are in 2000 and what? 2020. Maybe in God, it's like Tuesday. <laughs> it's like Tuesday. I guess it's 2,000 years since Jesus went away. Maybe it's, it's, it's like Monday, Tuesday, with God. When I are counting many thousand years, but with God, it's two years. You think God is delaying. You think God is not there. He's there. And he has got his own time. He's got his own judgment that he will bring so that is what we must understand god is patient god wants you to repent and that's the history lesson we learn here Asia was not punished immediately he was given a chance even though he fall from upstairs downstairs and he was injured he didn't die immediately because god was giving him a chance to repent to repent from his sins but what did he do he didn't check, take the chance god was giving him chance to 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 to, to seek him but instead, he fight against Elijah. He wants to kill Elijah. God is patient. He was patient with Israel from Ahazia to the exile of Assyria, maybe 150 years. God was patient, patient, patient with his people. And that's why even in the end, even the people can't blame God. And that is what you must consider today, my fellow South Africans, my brothers and sisters. God talks today through preaching of the word, through discipline, through rebuke of sin. Many people, many times, we reject the word of God. Sometimes, as I said, we don't see anything bad happening. Okay? We do wrong thing. there's nothing bad happening to me. There's nothing bad happening to me. So, uh, let me continue. God, where are you? you? You can't punish me. So, it means I'm safe. No, you're not safe. As I said, we can ghost to God. God talks to you. You, 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 you like you're vanishing. You're, you're hiding. You don't want to respond. God talks to you. You deny the reality. Ah, there's no God. He can't do anything to me. Really? Go and read also in Luke chapter 9, verse 51 to 56. Because you must understand that God is patient. He is also strong. He is also powerful. That's why he is able to be patient. Patient with you. And that's why in Luke chapter 9, verse 51 to 56, Jesus went to preach and do miracles to a certain town in Samaria. But the people say, no, 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 we don't want you, Jesus. We don't want you. We don't want your miracles here. We don't want your teaching here. Go away. Pass. And then the disciples of Jesus were very angry. And they said, Jesus, let us do what Elijah did. Let us call fire from heaven and burn this town. Jesus said, no, don't do that. Don't do that. Because I didn't come to destroy. I'm here to give people a chance to repent. I'm here to give people a chance to be saved. I'm here to save. That's what Jesus was saying. It's not because he's weak. It's not because he's not there. He doesn't see the wrong that we do or you are doing. He sees it and he can punish. But when he gives you a chance, it's because he is patient. And that's what you see in, as I said, Luke chapter 9, verse 51 to 56. And also here in chapter 1. If we are able to, to, to receive the mercy of God, it's because of Jesus Christ, whom God punish. He is the one who can stop the punishment of God coming to you. 
He is the one who is holding the wrath of God that it must not come to you. But if you reject Jesus, then there is no salvation. There is no refuge. There is no escape from the wrath of God. Not only here on earth, but when you come to the end of life. Let me come to the last thing. The Lord Jehovah does not change. And his word remains true and faithful. No matter what your response is, no matter what your attitude is, you cannot deny or change that God exists and God is powerful. Chopeza rachinda kurichibu onewa pandichauri muzimu hasha nduki na ifilawe lingo liafuru peze and na obone banga pindula hani wajia hani pungula mzimu wajia hani mzimu azushandu kisi uba honea mzimu azushandu kisi manda mzimu na obone bazu ya haneza into yoke zine nifutu kusibu oni zatu nkulu nkulu uje ova aga penduga aga shinchi and izi lake lichala njalo likona litiniso liatembega no mawena unga liamugili no mawena unaba nkulu nkulu uyala ilizu lika nkulu nkulu no ma uli tata ganja kodwa agushinji itiniso nukutu nkulu nkulu kona nukutu nkulu nkulu uyasebenza unamandla as people in everyday life in relationships we are affected by what other people do we can't escape that what other people say to us, we can't control it. What other people do to us. And many times the things we do, the reactions, it's a reaction to what other people are doing. And sometimes we end up changing. We end up doing things we're not supposed to do because of what other people are doing to us. But with God, you can't change him, no matter what you do. You can't diminish or decrease his power. Even if you ignore him, it doesn't mean he go away. He doesn't exist. He is there. Even if you wish away and you say there is no hell and you deny it and say God doesn't punish sin, it doesn't mean it will change. It doesn't mean the Bible must change. And that is what was a lesson to us, but even to the Israelites originally. That even though they are in Babylon, even though they want something, they cannot change the word of God. They must accept the word of God because it is true. Uh, and it depends on us. I've made this example that God is like, a, let's say, a heater. I agree it's cold now, winter is coming. So people will use heaters. So you set the heater. The closer you get to the heater, the more warm you feel. But the further away you go, the more cold you get. The heater doesn't change. You don't change the heater. But it's you who's changing. If you come close to God, you will find he is loving, he is gracious, he is merciful. But if you go away and turn your back on him, you will feel the cold, the wrath of God. It's not God who changes. God remains the same. He's still saying, if you come to me, I forgive you, I accept you, I love you. But if you go away from me, it's like leaving the heater there. You're going to feel cold. You're going to, to, to suffer. And that's what you see here. God showing that he doesn't change. He's the one in power. And you see also from verse 15, where God tells Elijah to go and follow this captain. And nothing will happen to him. Because God was showing the power uh, that he has over the king. Because the king was thinking that he has power. It is like two forces fighting against each other. The king says, Jehovah says, Asia says and wants this. But this is what God wants. So, who must win? Who is going to win? Again, it's an obvious question. Asia lost, Jehovah won. It's not like what, what, what is said in English where you, or in science. I don't know if it's science. What happens when an unstoppable force meets an immovable object? But that question doesn't apply to us because we are not immovable. You might think that you are immovable. No, no, nothing can move you. How do you think that you are the king? Nothing can move you. No, you are not like that. Look at Asia. He was moved. Chucked out. Because God is an unstoppable force. And you can't face that force. You can't stop the force of God. Yes, you might wish you can live forever, but you will die. Because you can't control your life. You can't control the day of birth and the day of death. It's controlled by God. And also what happens during your life is under the control of God. But we think we control our destiny, we control our life. God is not there. I call now, listen to this passage. You are not an immovable object. The power of God, you can't change it. And you can't change his word. You can't change his power, no matter what you do. But also, you find here in Second Kings, the lesson that 
Yes, death and life is controlled by God. Whether we are powerful, we have money, we are clever, we can't stop death. If God has decided that you die today, you will die today. And if you are to die in your sins, oh, oh, oh that's the decision of God. You are gone forever. It's God who decides. Whether to save you and give you chance and to repent is the decision of God. And you find here also Elijah going to the king, knowing himself, Elijah, that he, his life is in God. It's not in the hand of the king. And it was a lesson encouraging the prophets of God. You must not fear people. You must not fear to speak the truth. Maybe because you are afraid of what people will do to you. Hey, 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 I must not tell these people because they won't give me money. Hey, they will kill me. Hey, they, they won't like me. I don't fear people. That's what the history lesson is showing here. Even to the prophets in exile. Even to the church today. The preachers today. You, can't, you must not fear people. What happens to you is determined by God. Even if they kill you, it's because God decided that come to me now. And for the believer, you are going to God. But everything is in the hands of God. Look at the life of Jesus. He died, yes. At the end of the chief priests, the leaders of the Jews, the Roman soldiers. But it was all under God's control. It was God's decision. It was God's plan. It was controlled by God because he controls life and death. And when you know that, you don't fear. What you must do, you believe in God. You speak the truth. You stand on the truth no matter what happens, no matter what people do to you. You must not change the word for people. You must not change the word for circumstances. No. We must remain faithful to the word of God. And this is what we, we see here. Because sometimes people... We, 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 we give too much power to people. You know, in Venda, when they greet the king, hey, you who says, if I, if I must die, I must die. Icon. Icon. The, the king doesn't have that power. Hey, man, you are giving too much power to a person. The one who says you must die and you, you can die is God. It's not a person. Whatever king they are. They don't have the power. Jesus is the Alpha and Omega. He's the resurrection and life. And look at the life of Elijah. He didn't even die. He ended up going to heaven. Showing that Ahab tried. Jezebel tried. Asia tried. They failed. But the end of a believer, of a servant of God, is heaven. Ahaziah was told that he's going to die. And going to Ekron is not going to help him. The decision was set by God. You are going to die. And no God can change that. Even that God Nyana was a Ekron. He can't change the decision of God. But God was teaching here, us also, that yes, Asia fall and he was sick. But the problem, the sickness was not the body. It was not death. The sickness was that he was far away from God. He didn't believe in God. That is the sickness of Asia. And that is the sickness of today. That is the big sickness. Coronavirus, yes, I know, is sick, but the big sickness is that we hate God, we don't love God, we don't respect God. We are living as if there is no God. We reject his word. We reject the preachers and the prophets of God teaching us the word of God. That is the biggest sickness of humankind. That is the biggest danger. Don't fear cancer. Don't fear coronavirus or whatever sickness. You must fear this sickness of sin because it leads to you facing the wrath of God. Look here. You are offered the truth of God. But you reject it like Asia. You are offered the salvation. You don't accept. You are offered the commands of God. But you don't want to obey. You are offered to repent. But what is your response? You find like Asia. Even though he did a lot of things. Like the last verse says. Because he was a king. There are a lot of things that he did. Which are not written here in this Bible. But maybe in the history of the kings. He did a lot of things as a king. Maybe he did good things in the economy or he built buildings. But that's not the most important thing. He wasted opportunity. He didn't accept the word of God. And the decision was set. You are going to die. And indeed, it happened. He died. Beloved, it is something which we must learn here. We must accept Jesus by faith. Because that's what God is talking to us through him. The word of God is talking about Jesus. We are offered Jesus. He is the king. He is the savior. Submit to him. Believe him. 
Let's end by looking at Luke chapter 16, verse 19 to 31. The story of the rich man and the poor man Lazarus. Luke chapter 16, verse 19 to, to 31. And you find that uh, both of them, they died. Now they go to eternal life. The rich man is in hell. He's burning. And the poor man Lazarus, he went to heaven and is with Abraham and the other believers there. Now the rich man, it says in that story, he cry when he see Abraham. Hey, Abraham, Father Abraham, please help me, help me. Uh, and Abraham say, no, we, we can't help you. We are in lockdown, Tina. We are in lockdown in heaven. You are in lockdown in hell there. We, we, we can't get over there. Ah, Mara, Father Abraham, even if you just give me some water, nyana. no, 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 we, we can't get over there. It's not like Ramaphosa, who today will say cigarettes allowed, tomorrow he say cigarettes not allowed. Today he say you are allowed to move before between provinces, tomorrow he says the provinces' borders will be closed. With God, it's finished. If you die, you go out of this earth, it's finished. There is no changing. There is no going back. When the word of God says, repent and accept Jesus, you are going to heaven. Nothing will change. But if you reject Jesus, you are going to hell. Like this rich man in Luke 16. He cried and he said, but okay, okay, uh, Father Abraham, maybe send, send some prophets there to warn my brothers, my family. Ungati, this guy was a good close, he was a good ancestral spirit. He close a right little. Lifuno kusiza abantu baalo ukuti, hey, you must change and come to Jesus. But Abraham say what? No, I can't help the people. You can't help the people. We are dead. We are already past. But God has sent Moses and the prophets. What does it mean? It means the scriptures. He has given the people the Bible. He has given people, people who can preach and give them the word of God. No, but if, if, if you send somebody from the dead, maybe they will listen. But Father Abraham say no. Let me read for you Luke chapter 16, verse 29. But Abraham said, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, no, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. Then Abraham said to him, if they don't hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced if someone should rise from the dead. And it happened even in the time of Jesus. Jesus rose from the dead. There were people who didn't believe. They didn't accept. It's because of the heart. They don't accept. But even if you deny it, that Jesus rose from the dead, it doesn't stop that truth. The only thing it just confirms is that you are not accepting Jesus and your destiny is like the, this rich man. Beloved, in other words, the Moses and the prophets is the Holy Scripture, is the word of God, which God reveals himself to us that he is present, he is powerful. And if you don't listen to him, it doesn't change who God is. It doesn't change the word of God. But it just confirms your destiny. That you are against God and you are faced with the wrath of God. But God is still working today, my fellow South Africans. Not only in the time, he didn't only work in the time of Elijah. He's working today. Giving you his word. Giving you the apostles, the pastors, the preachers to preach his word. And when we understand the importance of the word of God and how he reveals himself, then we'll see that the Bible is actually the, the, the biggest gift for, for, for humanity. It is what we need. It is the answer. It is the medicine. It is what gives life. Not just here on earth. And that's when we will also fight to start churches. So that we have communities of believers. Preaching points where the word of God can get close to people in different parts of Houting, different parts of South Africa, different parts of Africa. That they hear the word of God. So that they hear and see God and accept his power in their lives. And that's why we'll even support the training of pastors, missionaries, through the seminary that we have. So that the word of God must be explained well. And we see God and we know God. Beloved, may God be with you. That indeed his presence, his power, is good for you. But if you don't accept him, I can't promise you any other thing. If you reject God, then God, you will see him fighting against you. Amen. Let us pray. Let us end in prayer. I will lead you in, in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that you give us this word that you 
preserved for us from long time ago because you are God who has been there from long time ago. You are God who control history. You are God who never changes. Even though we as people we change, we are not consistent, we are not faithful, but you remain faithful. You remain consistent. You are true. You promise eternal life, salvation, grace, and forgiveness to those who believe in you. But you also promise that if we reject you, the consequence of that is that we see your wrath. We are destroyed. We suffer eternally in hell. But God, we thank you that you give us Jesus Christ, who died on the cross, who took the punishment of sin on himself. But we also thank you that you give us your word that talks to us even today. You give us preachers, you give us churches, and even though we can't go physically to church, but we are able to hear your word, we are able to read your word in our homes, wherever we are, even in languages that we can understand very well. Oh, we don't have any excuse not to believe, not to accept eternal life. Help us, oh God, help our unbelief, help our weakness, help us to overcome doubt, so that situations must not overcome us, but we remain faithful. We choose you, we heed or we respect your word, and we also be bold and confident in encouraging others to repent. Our friends, our relatives, our fellow South Africans who are still outside, who think there is no God, who think the word of God is nothing. Oh God, I cry for them. Change them. Show them the light before it's too late. I pray, oh God, that you help us as churches of South Africa, Reformed Church in South Africa, Synod Zotpansberg, that the efforts we are doing to advance the preaching of your word through training pastors in Heidelberg Theological School. Help us to do it. We thank you that since 2002 when we revived this program, it has continued up until now. Even though the school doesn't have accreditation status, but you helped us to, to work with Northwest University and also Mukanyo Theological College. We thank you that there are many or a few who can come and heed your call and give their lives to train to become ministers. I pray, O oh God, that you be with the students who are studying for theology. Help them to be faithful, to trust in you, but also to work hard in growing their gifts and understanding uh, your word. Help them to have the tools so that they can work through your word. They can explain your word. They can open your word for us so that we understand you and see you in every situation we are in. Oh God, I ask that you be with the management, the board, especially even in this process where the merger of Iani and Heidelberg was supposed to be completed, but because of coronavirus, the synod meeting was postponed. Oh God, help that that process indeed be completed, that as churches of Synod of Zopansberg, we have one institution of training that trains future ministers, but also trains disciples in different parts of ministry. We pray, oh God, that you give us also people who can teach and also we need resources, oh God, money and to can buy equipment and buildings. But so far we thank you for what we, we, we have and above all we ask that you work in each one of us, our hearts, so that we think seriously about your word. We support the advancement of your word, the preaching of your word. We support it even by supporting this training which is done in Heidelberg Theological School. I pray, oh God, that indeed your word which never fails, your word which will conquer, indeed may it conquer through us. I pray, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Beloved, let us sing the song, If I yes on the Chedza, verse 1 and 2. If I yes on the Chedza, verse 1 and 2, as we re reflect on the message that we had. Sing 
Beloved, uh, as I mentioned last week, uh, this Sunday, if we're meeting, we'll be praying and collecting for Heidelberg Theological School, the ministry, the work of training future pastors in our churches, Reformed Churches South Africa, Synod Zorpansberg. Yes, the school uh, is now based in Limpopo, Ngovera, at Iani Bible School. And as I said, there is major that is, was supposed to be completed at a synod meeting, a special synod meeting, but then it was postponed. But um, le, even though we are under this situation where we can't meet, there is coronavirus, uh, let's remember our work, our mission uh, that we are called to do, the objectives that we must achieve. Nothing has changed. Coronavirus must not stop us from being Christians. It must not stop us from being a church. It must not stop us from doing what we are called to do. And one of the things we are called to do, coronavirus or no coronavirus, is that we want to train pastors. The word of God must be preached well and uh, done in the right way. So whatever contribution you can make, uh, you can send it to straight to the Classes Houting Theological Training Board uh, bank account, which is uh, number 405 uh, You will have received the pamphlets last week, having the prayer requests or prayer items, and also including the bank account. So whatever we can contribute, whatever little we have, let's support the ministry of preaching the word of God, study the word of God through Heidelberg Theological School. So if you do that, if you do deposit or transfer, please in the reference write your name or the name of your church and also give the deposit slip or proof of payment to the treasurer at your worship center. But also because it's the beginning of the month uh, and as we meet on Sundays, we would have been collecting alms. So I'll encourage you that even the money that you always budget to can give for collection, uh, even though we are not meeting, let's also do that by depositing in the church account for savings, Reform Church Job Back Savings Account, uh, 933-336-6843. And it's so that we can help each other even respond to coronavirus situation where some people might not have food, uh, might not have jobs, and then we can help each other from this fund. So let us uh, sing again that song, if you like it's only Chedza, but also Ngajvenda, uh, verse 2 of that song as we prepare to receive God's blessing if you like Jesu the Chedza Beloved, accept the words from Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17 to 23, as the words through which God promises to be with you 
and God bless you. Accept God's blessing. May the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, give you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him, so that you have the eyes of your hearts enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, and what are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power toward you who believe according to the waking of his great might, that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. May Christ, the head of the church, rule in your life and fill you with his grace that you continue growing to be like Christ. Amen. Beloved, indeed, I wish you God's blessing. I wish you that God help you to hear his word more and many times. And thank you for being part of this worship service. Let us then end by singing the song, the English song which says, Come thou fount of every blessing. Tune my heart to sing thy grace. Tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing. Call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet. Sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the mountain fixed upon it, mount of thy redeeming love. Here I raise my Ebenezer, hither by thy help I'm come. Thy hope by thy good pleasure, safely to arrive at home. Jesus sought me when a stranger, wandering from the fold of God, he to rescue me from danger, interposed his precious blood. To grace a greater debtor, daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness, like a fetter, bind my wandering heart to thee. Prone to Seal it, seal it for 